Hey, we're live with James Smitty speaking, TradingSites.io. Uh, I've been talking about for the past six months how I think 2026 is all about uh, personal AI employees slash assistants. Uh, I think the start of that just came out this week from OpenAI. It's called ChatGPT Pulse. And I want to share with you why this is important. If you are in the education space and you're thinking about, um, you know, how am I going to connect with the people that I'm teaching? Or what are the resources that they're going to have available when I'm trying to create these programs that I either want to sell to them or teach to them? Um, this is a really interesting tool. And there's one specific reason. And I want to share that with you up front. This is the first one that I have seen that acts on your behalf with no input. So if you think about it regularly, what happens is, you know, you log into ChatGPT, you open up your phone, you do something where it's your prompting, and then you get some kind of response. The way that Pulse works is that every morning slash the next time, I guess it's the next time that you uh, log in to your ChatGPT account or prompt it once a day, it is going to come up with a series of cards. And those particular cards are exactly what uh, kind of a pulse thinks of. This is uh, the AI companion slash personal assistant is going to come up with a series of cards with suggestions or next steps based on the conversations, the outcomes you were looking at, and the things that you were working on the day before. So this is completely personalized and pulse is acting on your behalf. Now, Think that through for a second. If you, for example, are a student and you're in someone's classroom and you're maybe doing some work, you're working on homework, you're working to learn something, if Pulse knows where you are, what you're doing and what you're working on, this is going to come up the first time and this is going to say, hey, here's the next step. Or did you consider this? And it's not the teacher slash course creator saying, Here's what you have to do. We now have an AI personalized assistant starting to go and interact um, with us and initiating the conversations uh, with us. So this is a fundamental shift in the way that you have to start thinking about how are we going to use AI, but how are the people that are buying courses or that we're teaching going to use AI when they now have someone that's going to talk to them. Now, the reason this is super important is actually something that Google did last week as well. So I want to show this to you uh, and just kind of remind you. I've talked a lot about uh, Google AI Studio. I'll just open this one here. Now, if you haven't been to Google AI Studio, this is a place where you can play around with all the cool new Google tools. I did a, I did a video, uh, I think in January, about AI Studio. And again, I'll put the links here. It's aistudio.google.com. Um, this was the first one. They had one was Gemini, which is the Google uh, uh, AI tool. Uh, they had one called uh, Flash 2.0, and it was the first one that we saw that was multimodal, right? So uh, on the left-hand side here, you can see where it says stream. This is the one where you could have a conversation with Gemini with the AI tool. You could show it your webcam. So this is something that the camera on your phone and also on your desktop, anywhere that you have a camera and even your screen, you were able to talk to the AI tool and it knew what you were looking at, what you were working on and what you were saying and hearing and also the text part. Now, if you've been using this one before and played around with it, and I did a couple demos, it was super cool. Um, the thing is what was though that it wasn't as natural as you would have liked it. So for example, if you said something, it may have taken two, three seconds before it responded. And if you interrupted it, sometimes there was like that back and forth where no one knows what to say or who's speaking next. And then when it did come back, it would kind of regurgitate the previous step to confirm that it was there. Now, this was really cool, and I think it's a wonderful tool. However, it just wasn't as natural as... Uh, as if you felt you were talking to a real person. Now, that changed this week. If you look over on the right-hand side here, you'll see that they now have Gemini 2.5 Flash Native Audio Preview. So this just came out. And what I'd suggest that you do is go to aistudio.google.com and play around with this because this is like talking to another person. 
And I'm going to show you a couple of things that they've done just to make sure that you kind of get that uh, feeling. So let me just see if I can minimize this a little bit here. Yeah, so over, well, maybe I'll make it bigger. Over on the right-hand side, you can see that you still get to do those voices, right? So some of them are British, some of them are English. I, I can't remember, uh, but they just have different styles. Uh, upbeat, middle pitch, they have male, female. Uh, I think these ones are all English, but there's some all sorts of really cool voices there. And in the past, we could pick a voice. Now, the in interesting thing with this one is we now have system instructions. So this is one where we can start to tailor specifically the conversation that we're having with the AI tool that has a fundamentally um, different way of interacting with this. It's not just like picking the voice anymore. We can add a whole bunch of different instructions here. And then also, if you look down on the right-hand side, you'll see there's a couple additional pieces. Let's Gemini, this one, turn coverage. Let's Gemini send audio and video when speech is not detected. And here's the neat one, effective dialogue. Let Gemini adapt its response style to the input expression and tone. This is the other part that was really missing was that if someone's talking passionately or if they're very sad, if they're speaking with a different tonality, tempo, pitch, all of those things are now picked up with this particular one. And also the proactive audio. This feature enables the model to choose to not respond to audio that is not relevant to the ongoing conversation. There's some additional things here as well, but the bottom line is Google has now brought out something that is like really, really talking to someone that is natural. And then now if we go back to our pulse, we've now got a situation where ChatGPT has something that is proactive. So I think that's really important. And what we're going to see soon, maybe the end of this year, maybe the first month or two, it's September when I'm doing this. I wouldn't be surprised at the end of October, something similar is, uh, or in October, something similar is going to come from the other tool, this pulse part. So now we got multimodal, conversational, video, audio, text, and now we've got something that's proactive. Now chat, uh, GPT, that particular tool right now, uh, that one is only available on the smartphone to the pro users right now, and they're starting to roll it out uh, uh, as we go. The other thing to be aware of, that it's made for you once a day, every day. So this isn't something that is with you all of the time. It's with you one time in the morning, I guess. They're using a 24-hour clock, and it's whenever happens there. And it does asynchronous research on your behalf. So if you've had a particular chat or discussion, or you've been working on a particular project, what it does is it researches in the background again on your behalf. Each night it synthesizes information from your memory, chat history, and direct feedback to learn what's most relevant to you. Then it delivers a personalized focused update the next day. So it could be follow-ups on a topic, other ideas for a quick healthy dinner, and you can connect it to Gmail and Google Calendar to prevent uh, to provide additional context and more solutions. So this is kind of really cool, right? Thinking about, okay, what happens when we're a student? What happens when we're working on a project? Let's say we're finding out about, um, you know, learning how to do something. We It knows where we are and it can make suggestions on what the next steps are. It may know that you had trouble with something, so it may offer clarifications. We now got this situation where we're doing something uh, that is really, I just wanna make sure that I put this up. I wanna just kind of think about it from the point of, uh, uh, of the, the teacher slash student. Uh, let me just open my map here because I wrote some examples um, just so that we can kind of talk about it. So, you know, for from information to guidance, again, this is the one where it's not us prompting, it is starting to do some guidance. So when it comes to you with already filtered relevant content, and it's personal. Um, the other one is, is it keeps you focused on what's mattered. Remember, it synthesizes stuff. And if you were looking at 48 topics or 50 topics, or you were trying to learn a whole bunch of different things, it has the ability to filter the ones that it thinks are, are important and give you the guidelines or the accountability to get on to the next steps. And it remembers it knows whatever was taught before. It knows where you are. 
and then it can provide the information that is guiding you through it. So you're not asking like, what should I study next? It's pulse comes up with it and lets you know, hey, this is the next thing that we have to do. Um, here's the other one that it was kind of interesting that I thought too. This is the first real glimpse of AI as a proactive mentor, not just a reactive tool. And if we tie that in with this whole idea of having a voice agent, AI employee, personalized companion, what do you think is going to happen to the courses, to the content, all of those things that you maybe did in the past on your own or you relied on your expertise to do it? So, you know, this is going to be kind of a scary slash fun time. And we've got to position ourselves so that we can take advantage of these tools and make sure that we're guiding the students to make the prompts in the first place so that any of these tools that come up and make suggestions are following what we've instructed, whether through our course or whether through our teaching or whether through these live classes, the prompts that we've actually given the students or the people we're teaching or the people that are taking these courses is if we give them the prompts, they're now going to make sure that these personalized pulses, this one's called, or this interactive personalized agent, they're also going to be following the things that we've suggested for them to get started. So this is kind of interesting. I want to just think what's going to be happening here. We're very, very close to a personalized assistant for both learning and also providing all of the work that we normally do with students. My name is James. It's trainingsites.io. Uh, .io. Put some comments below. Let me know what you think about it. And of course, like and subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up, all of that cool stuff. And I'll be back tomorrow with another great video to help you start, build, and grow your education business. Take care and expect the best.